Hello, sir. Good evening. Hello. Hello, sir. Good evening. Sir, can we start the webinar? Sir? We'll start, eh? Yes, sir. We'll start. So, um, I'm going to share this my screen. Am I okay. a host? Sir. After the introduction, you can start your slides, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. A mesmerizing evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the pre-conference webinar on veterinary fisheries and animal husbandry organized by Biolix. Biolix is a non-profitable professional association which prominently promotes research and development. Biolix conferences bring together the professional wizards and leaders who have explored all avenues to reinforce the field of life sciences and medicine technology. Biolix conducts events worldwide which help in enhancing the skill set of the people from diverse industries and also forms a common platform for eminent personalities, physicians, researchers, doctors, and academicians, professional business figures, and much more. Upcoming conference details. International Conference on Veterinary Fisheries and Animal Husbandry, which is going to be held on 27th and 28th July 2024 at South Africa. Regarding interest of registration and any queries, you can contact the given WhatsApp or email here. We are very glad to welcome you all for today's webinar. I would like to introduce the keynote speaker, Dr. Kennedy Miyaro Makoba, lecturer, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine and Surgery, Department of Veterinary Public Health, Pharmacology and Toxicology, Egerton University, Kenya. Dr. Kennedy Makoba, currently a lecturer of veterinary public health, epidemiology and economics at Egerton University, Kenya, holds a Bachelor of Veterinary Medicine from the University of Nairobi, Kenya. He pursued postgraduate studies in veterinary, epidemiology and economics, later earning a PhD in medicine in Japan. With experience in academia, research, and project management, he has presented at international conferences, published in peer-reviewed journals, and contributed to funded projects. Dr. Mukhova's return to his role as a lecturer underscores his commitment to teaching, research, and student supervision. Now, I request Dr. Kennedy Miura Mukhova to take over the session. Sir, please. Sir. Okay. Can yes, I share my screen? Yes, sir. Sure. I will stop my screen. Okay. Yes, sir. Now you can proceed. Are you seeing the screen? Yes, sir, we can see your slides. Okay. Let me put it in uh, uh, slide. our show. Our yes. slide. Show. Yes, Fine. And it's moving? Yes, sir, it's moving. It's moving? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon to participants who have joined us from wherever you are joining from. Yes, as the, the moderator has introduced me, my name is Dr. Kennedy Mioro Muchabo from Kenya. Yeah, the, I'll have a brief introduction about myself, though you have introduced me briefly. So the one which you used to advertise uh, is a keynote, keynote speech. The, the, the photo was an avatar from my ex Andrew, formerly Twitter. But now, then uh, this one uh, I took 2014 after finishing my PhD defense. And uh, this is the current one. 
post corona or post covid uh, photo which i'm using on my Facebook account so you have already introduced me i graduated in 2014 from Gifu university under a program of united graduate school of Modern sciences offered by four universities in japan uh, that is a Gifu university which gives the certificate but i was based in obhiro university of agriculture and veterinary medicine which was part of the collaboration and also the water university and Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. So my PhD is uh, in veterinary sciences, but with a bias to molecular epidemiology. And there before, I graduated from University of Nairobi, 20, 2004, with MSc in uh, veterinary epidemiology and economics. Then uh, in the same university, I obtained Bachelor of Veterinary Medicine, that's uh, and surgery. And that's 1998. Then I enrolled for MBA strategic management, which I did coursework, but I'm not finished the project because of the some funding issues and some issues there. And there. So I was in Japan for five years, but I enrolled for PhD in the first of April 2010. Then I graduated on 13th March 2014. Then uh, this my currently, which you mentioned, um, I'm teaching at BPHPT, which is Veterinary Public Health Toxicology, Pharmacology and Toxicology. My teaching subjects are uh, epidemiology, public health, but public health uh, I teach to para professionals, not to vet surgeons, and uh, veterinary economics. Um, and about statistics. I supervise both undergraduate and postgraduate students, and then uh, research through creation of uh, gradual pathology product value chains, drug or life diseases playing in Kenya, under one health approach. Other responsibilities in the department include the drafting of competitive proposals to assist data collection and analysis, and preparing reports and examinations to reviewing peer Papers. I also do administrative work and consultancies and other assigned duties. Maybe a brief career summary. Uh, in 2023, early 2023, that's uh, uh, January up to May, I was acting chair person of uh, veterinary public health, Macrocha Toxicology Department. Uh, then uh, I've been a lecturer since then in the same uh, department, that is VPHPT. Then uh, in, 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 uh, from uh, January 2019 to 30th, 10th, uh, October 2020, then, that's when the post-corona, I mean the corona period started. Uh, I was a postdoctoral research associate under one health project, collaborative project in Western Nairobi, in also Liverpool and the International Livestock Research Institute, where I conducted uh, research under one health in the interface of therapeutic interface of humans, animals, and wildlife and environmental health. And then uh, I've been a lecturer since 2015, uh, up to date. But previously, I was a research scientist in Kenya Agricultural Livestock Research Organization Cairo Biotechnology Research Institute, which was previously known as Treprosomiasis Research Center, which also transformed itself from the first one, which was Ketri, which is Kenya Biotechnology Research Institute. And uh, that's a brief summary. So far, so good, moderator. Am I audible still? Moderator? Yes, sir. I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. So that's a brief summary of myself. This is the first time I'm giving a keynote speech. 
but I have attended the exam, so I thought that's the thing. That's the, the best way I can start. Now the crux of the man, the matter, of the topic of today uh, is as control from antibiotic and from cyclopenicillin drug for Nagana. I hope the slides are moving. Are we together now? Moderator? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. With, with the slides is visible? Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. So, okay. that's a research which we conducted and published this year, but we did it uh, from 2022 for three months. It's a short period. It was a short, ex two experiments, short, I'll explain. The first order is from uh, Japan, who we collaborated with. And it's from the uh, National Research Center of Japan. This is Obihiro University of Agriculture and Veterinary Medicine in uh, Obihiro, Kaido, Japan. That's where I was when I was doing my PhD. And my second order here, but we conducted together with uh, my collaborator, that's uh, Judith Chimuliti, who is the third author. Brother is from the uh, Research Institute, Kenya Agricultural Research Organization here in Kenya. And that's where we conducted the experiment from. And uh, myself, I'm from Edgerton University, but I collaborated uh, because of the manpower, which which is endowed uh, with the uh, Technology Research Institute, which was formerly Transformers Research Institute. And then we were able to get isolates which are stored in the, in the institute. Then the rest of others, uh, the last two others, uh, and the uh, and Kawazu, these are professors. They they were my supervisors in Japan, and then uh, there is also Kita, uh, Professor Kita, who is from Nagasaki University. And uh, those uh, those those are the ones uh, who we conducted the research together. So let's go to the paper itself. It's structured. I'll do introduction. Then I'll touch on materials and methods, results, discussion, results, discussion, and conclusion. So, brief introduction of uh, this African tuberculosis is a disease complex of humans and animals and caused by a protozoan hemophlagellates of genus Tuberculosoma. In the humans, it's called human African tuberculosis or sleeping sickness. In animals, it's called Nagana or animal African tuberculosis. It's African tuberculosis because there's American tuberculosis, which is caused by a there. So in Africa, we have African Sorry. It's, uh... Okay, so sorry for that. Uh, due to challenges associated with CSA control, drugs have remained the most important means of controlling the effects of livestock in many uh, affected areas. No new veterinary drugs for treatment of AAT, that's the animal African transport, have, have been released since 1985. And there's an increasing resistance to the existing tuberculosis. So that, therefore, there is an urgent need to develop new drugs. So ascofuronone, which I'm going to talk about, uh, you can see the chemical structure here. The chemical structure here is a, a fungal several metaphor of various filaments, including uh, acro, acrimonium egyptishcum that exhibit diverse physiological activities including antivirus, anti-tumor, anti-inflammatory, and hypolipidemic activities. Okay, so materials and methods. There are two experiments running concurrently. That's uh, experiment one was T. Revax with us over strain uh, K3, K3, like I said, is Kenya, which is a short form of K3, 
a strain of 2632. Then we use T congolense, that's the A strain of ERI, that one is AL, is ERI, International Labs of Research Institute, is, 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 is uh, known as 1180. But in K3, the strain which you used, the isolate we used, eh, is a K3 that of the Prosumacomense. So we inoculated into mice for so that we can get enough for us to infect the calves. And uh, we use six calves. My internet is unstable. I hope that is okay. I hope I'm older enough. So we infected into calves, six, we used six calves, three calves per strain, three calves for T. vivax, and three calves for T. congolense. Well, two calves serve as treatment animals, AF treatment, and one calf control became a control, and we used a placebo of BPS. So observation, we were using three key parameters. We are looking at parastemia, the calves, their body weight, but we are doing it weekly. Parastemia, we are doing it uh, after a day, a day, after every other day. We skip, we do today, we skip tomorrow, we do the third day, and we skip and that kind of thing every week. And we monitored for <clears throat> a period of 40 hours, a period of 43 days, and for T congolence, a period of 46 days. So uh, the treatment of AF was between 20 to 30 milligrams per kilogram body weight, which we mixed with 75% glycerol and 0.1% of twin 20. This glycerol has been found to AF. I'll be calling ascofluorum as AF onwards. So, uh, and we were putting, we were administering IM, that's intramuscularly, 10 ml at two points. We were trying to minimize because the, the, the suspension was very, very thick. We were trying to minimize the reaction points of this injection site. We were doing at two points. So, uh, when day six, day six, that's 40 VIVAX, day six, when the cells, the parastemia reached six to power seven cells per ml, the treatment started for F every day, fresh, freshly prepared uh, AF suspension. We treated, we, we administered for seven days up to day 12. That's AF finish at the day 12 for T vivax. Then in, uh, on day nine for T congolense, that's when he, the cells reach, parastemia reach 6.3 times 10 per seven cells per ml. Then that's when the treatment started and it went for seven consecutive days, but it ended on day 15 treatment. And then day 15, like the control also, every day we were injecting a placebo of BBS, 20 ml, and then it went up to 70 day when we administered the immunosin acetate to, to control animal. Then we monitored the calves under AF treatment for that period and did the experiment, ended for three days for T vivax and for six days on T. congolense. After finish, at the end of the experiment, we 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 designed this experiment in such a way that we took two ml of blood for all the six calves and injected into naive Swiss clean mice uh, IV into the mice to see whether there will be any expansion of parastemia or whether the AF or the cured the calves completely. 
That's for purpose of confirmation. And uh, later on, we after that, seeing the later, and then we sacrifice the mice after thirty days. We take for some of the changes, especially for the spleen, and the spleen are found to be normal. So there was no parasthenia in the mice, which said shows that even the aminosin acetate was not resistant. So results. This is the result for T Vibax uh, experiment. So day three, they reach uh, the parastemia reach uh, three point two to power seven to, to power ten point seven. Day four, it reaches six point three power to ten to power seven. Then day six, it was at the, at the same point. Then we started uh, AF treatment. On day seven, the following day, the following day, the A, no parastemia was detected. So, uh, and uh, at the end of the, tw the, the 12th, no, not day 12, day 43. There was no relapse of that, of that, uh, uh, that's T, T, TV1. TV1 means TVVAX1, TVVAX CAV1. And then TVVAX CAV2, TV2, they, you can see the, how the 3, 3.2 to power 10 to 10 to times 10 times 7, day 4, the same, 6.3 to increased. Then day seven, no, day six, eh? we, treat, we started the AF treatment. It was the same experiment. And then, uh, but on day seven, not detected. Yeah, it's, which means the following day, there was no detection of, of parastemia. And then the end of the treatment, that's at day 43, there was no relapse, which means uh, the T virus was cured. I mean, the Parasthemia, uh, the AF cleared the parasthemia. You can see here, uh, this is day seven. That's uh, TV, TV1, TV2. That's when the, we, were, we didn't detect any parasthemia. Then in the end of the experiment, that's when we treated the control. Then you can see all through, there is no parasthemia for the three calves. So this was a successful story of what that's why we are saying AF antibiotic is a, a promising antibiotic for treatment of Nagana because it's keyword for um, for T Vivax. And then uh, this one you can see placebo the 12 uh, that's uh, the 13 I think that's when you, you administer the citrate and then the end of the treatment, there was no relapse. And then, <clears throat> apart from that, we were also monitoring PCV. PCV is back cell volume and the body weights. And you can see the graphs here. Uh, a PCV, that's back cell volume, of 24 to 46% is normal. When it's below 20%, that animal is tending to be anemic. So, pre infection, the PCV was 34 of TV1, 31%, TV2, and 5% for the control. During the infection, PCV dropped in all calf, and after the treatment, PCV in all calf showed a recovery trend. So this is the PCV trends for the graph. And then uh, this is the period of treatment. And then this is the period of treatment. That's the body weights. Body weights were, were Weighing the calves weekly, so which means not have many data points, and uh, because of short period of experiment, the body weight didn't see didn't didn't see any variations so much. But in pre infection, they were TV was ninety kg and eighty seven kg for TV two, 
118 for the control. During inspection, body weight dropped in all calves. After the treatment, body weight in all calves showed but the body weight didn't vary much because of the short period of the experiment. So that's so far so good. That is a that is a Tivax. Now this is another story for T Congolense. However, in T Congolense, it was a different story. It didn't. Uh, do well. So you can see here day nine, that's when the treatment start. It was 6.3 to and three times 10 to power to 10, 10 to power 7. And then uh, day 13, when we treat the, the parastemia drop, day 15 and uh, day 13, you can see the dropping. And then day 17, the prasthenia was not detected. You can see here. There is a, you can see the variation of the graphs. Then you not detected. Then the the 40, 71.9 times 10 to power C. This is a very huge prasthenia, which means prasthenia came back with vengeance, and uh, that is a relapse. And then uh, the PCV. We were using it for critical purposes of knowing when to intervene to save the animal. So we we, we intervened with the medicine at day 24 to save the animal. The TC2, that's a T congolense calf 2. Uh, uh, AF, you can see day 9. Then I was with treat. Day 15, it was at 7.9 to power 6. Day 16, not detected, yeah, you can see this uh, gap here is parastemia, which means a suppression. Then there is a relapse where there is a spike. Of, but the control, the control, because we treated with the, the menacing, it's clear all the way at the end of the experiment, which ended at day 46. And uh, we intervened day 44, treatment for all the calves with the menacing acetate. So, treatment of the means in control calf, the 44 treatment of the means in, in calf one and two because of relapse. And the placebo, the placebo I've explained, treated with the medicine and we didn't see any relapse at the end of, end of the experiment. And then, he, again, we also observed uh, PCV trends, PCV, that's back cell volume trends. Uh, for T congruency calves and uh, body weight as well. So, uh, like I mentioned before, pre infection, the TC1 was 30%, 34% for TC2, 30% for the control. After the treatment, PCV in all calves showed recovery and recovery trend. PCV dropped again when two calves, one and two, relapsed. PCV, you can see. You can see a spike here where there is a drop because there's a relapse. And then when we treat with the diaminacin, the, the PCV start rising. And then the body weight, I said, we don't see much of the trends and we are only doing once weekly. But I get that one so far so good. But am I talking to myself? Hello? Moderator? Yes, sir. Everything okay? Yes, sir. Everything okay. Thank you. Let me continue. Then. Okay. So, we are almost through. I'm not going to take much of your time. Uh, by infection of two trypanosomes, Vivax and Congolese, two trypanosomes, Vivax and Congolese, all calf show parastemia. And uh, we looked at the PCV and and the uh, body weight. Experiment one, that's TV box, by AF treatment, preparations were not detected from peripheral blood by parasitological methods using weight. Let me put it there. 
using wet smear or HCT, hematocrit centrifugation technique or bavicot technique. Uh, PCV showed recovery trends, Goodwill showed recovery trends. Uh, the persons were not observed in all in blood in a in mice. Like I said, we 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 sub we subinoculated blood from the experimental animals to mice to see whether parastenia might be expanded to the mice again and see whether also if there are any resistance to the immunosent acetrate. So AAT, that's the African no animal African trypsmosis caused by T Webax can be detected by ascofuron of 20 to 30 milligrams per kilogram body weight. But in a paper, we have stated we have stated 25 milligrams per on the average 25 milligrams per, per kilogram. Okay, experiment two T congruency by AF treatment. At once the demons were not detected and from the blood by pathological methods, but elapsed on the 39 and 40 for TC1 and TC2. The PCV showed recovery trends after treatment, but PCV dropped again when there was a relapse. Body weight showed recovery trends after treatment, but body weight dropped again when there was relapse. Um, it's telling me my internet is unstable, but I hope I'm audible enough. AAT caused by T congruence cannot be completely treated by ascofuronone as AF of 25 milligrams per kilogram body weight. So, in conclusion, ascofuronone, which is abbreviated as AF, is a promising to consume of drug, especially for African, for animal African or Nagana, caused by T vivax. That's the prosumer of Vivax. It suggests that the compound can be developed further to be a sedative drug for T Vivax in non cystic so infested areas like South America and Southeast Asia. Uh, in addition, we can further test the AF antibiotic on T Evans and check its efficacy, which is a well argument why they need to develop the compound for the formation areas. To the best of our knowledge, this is a first report on ascofuron in vivo studies in Kabul. So, uh, it can go further. I, when I say further, it can be biosynthetically be manipulated so that it can it can it can cure all the plasmosis or the range. If not so, then we reserve it as a sanitary drug for. T vivax in non cystic infested areas. So this uh, chart shows the way we were scoring were under the wet, the wet or buffy coat. When you are scoring, you count the number of parasites per field, then you estimate that that's how we were coming with the with the with the antelope. Yeah, one to twenty. One to ten plus this five point four, this times this two point five times ten to power five, and the uh, two to three in twenty fields that kind of uh, then two three to ten fields yeah, and then you uh, that's how we were able to come up with that graphs of parastenia for both T trypsoma congruence and trypsoma vivax. So these photos to a mixture. This is a freshly, a freshly prepared ascofurano uh, compound ready for administration. Once we prepare, we're mixing with 75% glycerol and 0.1% twin 20. Twin 20 is a it's a surfactant. I think it's a, like a soap. So it becomes a, a suspension like this, which looks like penistrel, but it's a thick suspension. And we're making sure that we we mix it well. And it's freshly pre prepared every day when you are necessary for seven days. Then you can see here the calf, which is being bred uh, through the ear vein for, for us to check parastemia. Then uh, I said we used mice uh, after 
something like creating blood into mice, Swiss, Swiss white mice. Uh, we circulated 0.2 ml of blood into the mice, and then we monitored for pastemia. That's the photo shows there. Five mice per calf, and there were six calves. So this was around a total of 30 mice. So, and all of them we didn't see any prostemia coming up. At the same time, we also did postmortem for the mice to check spleen changes, and then they were no, they are not enlarged, they were normal, appeared normal, which means the experiment AF for Fibax was successful, and for the minazin, like I said, surreptitiously that there was no resistance of, of uh, to 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 the minazin acetate. So this paper was published in twenty uh, fourth. 24th uh, February this year, and it's open access. Uh, you can read you can read details of the experiment, which is published in the on Destaport Journal of Veterinary Research in South Africa. That's a journal in South Africa, Destaport, and uh, you can also access the full paper through my research kit and also my other published works and unpublished works are there in the research kit for those who are interested to find out what I've done. So I'm coming to the end. So uh, we thank uh, Kenya Agricultural Livestock Research Organization, which was administering the funds and uh, they provided the manpower to do the experiment and the resources, including the sourcing of the calves. So it's based in uh, in uh, in Muguga, Kiambu County in Kenya. And uh, I myself am based in Nakuru City in Echaton, Joro. That's when that's when I collaborated. Initially they wanted to give me the money to do from my university, but it was not possible because we don't have the facilities. So that's why we I went to my former employer to do the experiment and we collaborated from there. Uh, and then this fund, the, the funding was a joint funding from two universities, the collaborators in Japan. That is from Nagasaki University, Nagasaki University, and uh, National Research Center for Protozoan Diseases of the Hero, the Hero University of Agriculture and Development, which is my alma, alma mater when I was doing my PhD. I think uh, that's all uh, this uh, out. So that's the end. Thank you for listening. And I'm ready for one or two few questions or any point of clarifications. Then uh, that's also okay. That's all. Thank you, moderator and participants for listening. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a wonderful lecture. Participants, if you have any question, you can put it in chat box. Can I stop sharing? Yes, sir. Sure. I think no one has any questions, sir. No question. Uh, in, yeah. the, in the chat, what is the... No, no questions. Yes, I, I think maybe, uh, what I'm sorry, maybe, you know, my networks are spread. Eh? It was almost before late in the day, 7, 7, 7 p.m. Eh? So maybe the... Oh. They are waiting for me to go. I, I, I don't know unless, but I try to sell them, but we start early. I hope it was a fruitful. I don't know. This is the first time I'm giving a penis address. So.
Hi, sir. Hello. Yes, I've seen in the chat. Eh? Yes, I think we have one question. Why yeah. would the place bow show a drop in body weight? Uh, Why would the place bow show a drop in body weight? Like I said, body weight, you are using... Uh, you, you, the, the experiment was designed to use uh, 100 kilograms body weight. But uh, by the time we were starting the experiment, when we were climatizing the calves, uh, they added the weight. So the range was uh, 120 from 85 to 120. So there was a, a slight drop, but uh, a body weight in this case, because it's a short period of uh, experiment, and we were only weighing calves weekly, so we didn't have much data points, but you could see a drop because we were only using six animals. We could see a drop, very small, but it was very significant. Then there is one in the what the calves in the experimental study were not really made free from the Yes, that, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, yes. Actually, the calves were sourced from non sesa infested areas. And when they arrived in Japan, and the Biotechnology Research Institute, that's Kenya Agricultural uh, Livestock Organization, Biotechnology Research Institute in Kiambu County in Kenya, is non sesa area. So we, when they arrived in the, in the barn, we screened them. We, when we were, they were climatizing, we screened them. And we made sure they were not they were not having any parasite. And we also treated them, we gave them the common treatment. But for purpose of any, you can get the paper and read that's from Daniel Wanja. Is AF available? What was it used for currently? AF is not available in the market. It's not available in the market yet. Is being still in experimental stages as from the from the okay. It's, a, it's not currently available. Then if Mohammed Sahini, we have some network problem. Uh, no. Okay, that's not a question. So it's not currently available. Actually, when I was doing when I was doing the study and I do I reviewed the literature. I thought we were repurposing the drugs. You know, you can repurpose the drug, which is the bucket, you don't need to repurpose. But when we discussed with my collaborator from Japan, they told me the, the drug is still under experimental, so it's not available currently. Thank you for that question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Actually, we have no questions after this. I know one six. Sir. Yes, sir. No questions. Questions yeah, are no. answered. Even the chat box, I must say. Yes. Sir. Okay, that's all. You can. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you all for joining today's webinar. Comment from a comment from uh, yeah, in the comment, someone uh, added. Yeah, I've seen total Daniel Wanja thought the screening encompasses species antibodies against the parasites. The second good work for the work of the work of AMR. Yeah, uh, it was a simple experiment, but it has given um, some need for further research. We didn't do much. We were only looking at three parameters. Parastemia, and that was the most critical part, whether efficacy level in terms of whether the AF was going to suppress the parastemia. That's why, but even PCV, 
there was not much changes, but we were using it for purposes of to intervene in case of uh, critical levels taken anemia when we intervene. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, have you seen the commenters from moderator? Sir? The changing of the times and then we should have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's regarding the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, even earlier, I I put the seven, no, it was 4 30. 4 30 is African time. Through yes. my networks, and when I changed, it was late. Eh? It's yesterday that I was being told. From next time, we'll do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so George Mindeki, George Mindeki, you have noted that one? Yes. Yeah. We could have had many more participants. I noted sure. not that. So that's for you, moderator, to, sure. to tell us in time zones yes. earlier. Months. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful lecture. Thank you all for joining today's webinar. Can we wind up the session, sir? Yes, yes, yes. You can end. Yeah. Okay. So participants, you, you all can log out from the webinar. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining today. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye. Bye, sir.